Hello, this is a Mornington and Western six octave piano, often described as a ship's piano, and it's for assessment in transit. For the client to has asked us to if you can prove it here and there. And there's other work we could do on the piano too, but they asked particularly for the cosmetics of the front rail, the key tops. Now they're not ivory and it might be difficult to match this plastic, but you'll notice here that somebody's tried to match it. So I'm not sure we can manage that. Um, some pe sometimes people level off these chips so that um, they all look the same. Doesn't look very nice like that. Um, not quite sure what we can do. Sometimes we can weld some off the back, but there's no take some off the back and weld it on the front. But there's no no extra at the back there for you to do that. Um, but that does work quite well sometimes. Um, we use acetone and weld weld on weld it on the front. But, um, so that's unlikely to be a possibility. The pedals are a little bit on the high side. Eight centimeters the casters are probably a bit on the high side but but Egram is it's a uh, 60.5 so that's not too bad really uh considering it's such a small piano music stand is at a nice height here for that's the equivalent height to a grand piano music stand so there's lots of good things going for it monitor and western a, a very sensibly designed piano um you see the top there that's going to be difficult to improve uh very very difficult to improve uh that might We'll have to ask my polisher about that. Um, really, repolishing the whole piano is the arts. Obviously, that's very expensive, and uh, really, it's very difficult to get good quality six octave uh, upright pianos. And Monington's are one of the best makers of six octave upright pianos. Let's just have a look at the fall. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, obviously, you don't see that normally when you're playing. Um, quite a nice design there with some beading. And round this side uh, again not too bad so to try and tidy up the case try and do something with the top if we can and certainly the front rail shouldn't be quite such a problem to disguise and obviously repolishing is the answer um let's have a look on the inside now interestingly it's a bicord right the way through there it's not three strings here as you'd normally get on uprights um monitor make design this really well i've tuned a few of these in the past and it does sound very pleasant. A modern firm, Young Chang, tried doing the, the same idea, calling it a pianino. If you're in the trade, you might like to comment on that. They were reasonable. I actually bought and sold, bought one or two new ones to sell. But this is a very high quality six octave piano. dampers are lifting off slightly on the early side and the, as we'll see in a minute the key weighting is a bit heavy someone's replaced the tapes here um, and uh, so that's encouraging uh, presumably they've lubricated inside here as well because it looks as though it's been lubricated the tuning pins are tight i love this uh, little badge that they put on little logo and uh, that's typical Monington on the grands as well and by the way they're double iron frame so the back of the piano too has an iron frame the grands are the same uh, most Monington uprights uh, of this age anyway, uh, I like that. I think I'd probably all of them, if you are an expert in Monington, <laughs> perhaps you'd like to correct me on this. Got Monington patent on the back there for their double iron frame, which does hold it very stable, actually, um, but does make it a lot heavier as well. Somebody's replaced a couple of the strings here, but quite well done, actually. In fact, very well done. Not much difference there, but in tone. Both of them are excellent. And for the size of the piano, it's remarkable what kind of what bass they've managed to get. But out of tune at the moment, slightly flat. Here's the assessment sheet summary. So just uh, mentioning a few things about the piano. 72 keys. It's suitable for playing up to about Mozart. And then beyond, you might you will need a bigger keyboard. But... I remember my mother, when she retired, had a six octave piano. She got a, a Kemble, which is one of the better six octave pianos. Double line frame, but the tone of this one is, is excellent and Monington were particularly good at making them. So I'm very impressed really for the size of the piano. Um, I'll just put the key lengths down there because if we're going to try to replace the keys, they do look quite long um, and might make good and improve pitch raise and fine tune. Increase the half blow, that's just a small detail really. And that's the line where the keyboard starts, 56 grams. Down weight's a bit on the heavy side and with the dampers of being a bit early, it does feel a bit on the heavy side really. Quite a lot of work to get that corrected. Um, obviously if you're learning and uh, want to have a good touch, an even touch, then that's, that's very important. 
So that's a Mornington 6 octave upright piano made in 1929 um, with bi and no tri at all. And uh, Mornington made quite a few of these. They made them, designed them well, I believe, um, and have a very pleasant sound for the size of the piano. Remarkable bass for the length, of, for the size, for the height in there. It's a six octave piano, so if you want to study, then really you will have to get another piano quite soon, because uh, although up to Mozart, you can play most pieces um, on this piano without any problem. A very pleasant full sound. If you've got a good, a good make of small six octave piano then um, it's certainly worth maintaining modern ones Kemble was one of the ones that we we're particularly looking for because it's, uh, it's in, it, you do do find them from time to time Zender also make them they're a bit more varied uh, so of the 30th pianos Monnington's probably or the 1929 in this case uh, probably one of the best makes to go for for small pianos but this one does need some work so I hope that's helpful thank you very much for listening